In this video, we'll look at the Fusion 360 interface. Let's start with this menu up here. This is the workplace switcher. When I click on the arrow, I can access Fusion's different workspaces. Here I have the solid, the surface, the mesh, and the sheet metal workspaces. You'll probably do most of your work in the solid workspace. And when you click on the Create menu, you can see all of the tools under it. If you click on the three dots, you can pin that to the toolbar or to shortcuts or change the keyboard shortcut. The solid menu is where you create solid objects. The surface menu is where you create surface or hollow objects. The mesh workspace is where you can edit STL files. Those are files that are used for 3D printing. And in the sheet metal workspace, you can create sheet metal items such as computer towers or toolboxes. The plastic tab is for making molded plastic parts. You do need extensions for that. And extensions are apps that you purchase from the Autodesk store. On the Utilities tab, you'll find graphics for 3D printing, for nesting, which again is another extension that you need to pay for. You'll find scripts and add-ins, some tools for managing and computing, for measuring, for interference, which you can use to detect volumes of overlapping material for draft analysis, which helps you determine if the model is suitable for casting and molding, and accessibility. Accessibility lets you know if an area of the model can be accessed through a specific view. Section analysis lets you cut through the model to see what's inside. And this graphic lets you display component colors, which is useful in an assembly. The Select tool lets you select any number of ways. This is the browser. Document settings are here. You can change units. These are the named views, and this is the origin. When you see this eye graphic, that means you can turn it on or off. This is the timeline down here. As you work, a timeline of icons will appear for each action you took. Here you can orbit, Look at the model, pan, zoom, fit the model to the screen, choose your display settings. If the model isn't displaying as it used to, this is the first place to check. This is your work plane, and you can adjust the grid appearance on it. You can turn the whole grid off. And this graphic lets you see the model in different viewports. The scroll wheel on the mouse zooms in and out. This is the view cube and clicking on it I can view the model from different orthographic views. Click on the house to return to 3D. 
click on this arrow and view it orthographically, in perspective, in perspective with ortho faces, and I've got other options. And then up here, I can access extensions. I can check the job status of certain activities. Here's my notifications icon. Here's where I can get help and find out a little bit more about Fusion, such as the type of plan that I'm using. And under my avatar, I can access my Autodesk account, preferences, profile, give Autodesk feedback, and refer a friend. Preferences is useful because you have control over quite a bit of how the interface looks. For example, under General, I typically uncheck Reverse Zoom Direction because that's how I'm used to working with the scroll wheel. I've got options for other things. For example, sketches disappear automatically when you volumize them, that is, turn them into bodies and components. But if you don't like that, you can uncheck this box. Let's continue on with this menu. We've got the automated modeling tool here. That's where the software explores and creates design concepts for you. This is the Modify menu, and you can see all its tools here. And these are some of the tools that I have pinned to that menu. This is for making assemblies or multiple components. The Construct menu lets you make a bunch of construction lines and planes to help you build your model. Inspect lets you measure the model, reports interference, and gives you all these analysis tools. The Insert menu lets you insert decals, which are images, and files. It also lets you insert hardware from catalogs. If I hold the right mouse key down, I get a context menu. And I can also redo the last operation or undo it. And that sums up the interface.